Good morning, everybody. How are we? Good. Um, thank you for being here today. Uh, you're all very welcome to the Foundry, uh, particularly those of you that are here for the first time. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Carl Lumsden, um, and I'm the agency lead here in Ireland, and I look after the breakfast briefings. Um, so before we jump into uh, the intro for the content we're going to look at today and the YouTube um, special session, uh, just a quick, couple of quick announcements for you guys. So as always, if you are tweeting or taking Instagrams or anything like that, uh, the hashtag is uh, Google B hashtag Google BB, so feel free to tag that. Um, also, um, I've spoken a good few times about how important, um, everyone here in this room, how important we take your feedback. Um, so quick, quick show of hands, who here came from Dublin this morning? Okay, so that's probably about two thirds of the room. So who came, just show of hands that those that didn't come from Dublin, anyone came further afield? Okay, so you guys, uh, we've heard some of your feedback. So um, I'm happy to say for those who aren't from Dublin, we are going to be taking some of the breakfast briefings outside of Dublin going forward. Uh, yeah, a couple of cheers, yeah. So um, again, we have, that's based off your feedback. So we're, we're conscious that um, we obviously have a big presence here in Dublin, but we have a lot of advertisers um, in regional locations around the country as well. And we appreciate the, the effort and, and the time that a lot of you take to come up and visit us each month as well. So what you'll find is that the next communication you get for the next breakfast briefing um, is actually going to be in Limerick um, on the 28th of, of August. Um, so you'll get more uh, communication on that with the details and the content and what you can expect on that day. But um, for the Dublin folk, you've had it good for a while. Um, so for the rest of you folk, we're, we're glad to be going on, on tour, so to speak, and coming down to see you there. Um, okay, so jumping into uh, today's content. So why, why are we kind of looking at YouTube? We're pretty much, it's the first of, well, no, what was it, 3rd of August today? We're into August, it's H2, um, a lot of us have you know, one eye on, on 2019, but realistically we're probably, a lot of us now are, are looking at what are we going to do for the rest of the year, how are we going to see out the rest of the year, um, and a lot of us are probably starting to think about you know, what am I doing for my brand this year, um, performance marketing aside, which we focus a lot on, what am I doing for my brand, how am I going to make sure that um, I'm getting the sales that I need to get in particularly for a retailer around those busy, busy periods, your Black Fridays, your Christmas weeks, and so on and so forth. It's with that in mind that we've purposely um, asked Elaine to join us today to talk to us about YouTube. So I can say without a shadow of a doubt, um, I've worked with Elaine for a couple of years now. I, I absolutely love working with her. I easily loves YouTube the most out of anyone that I've ever met and knows her stuff really well. So those of you that will have worked with Elaine before or maybe were even here last year, um, you would have seen some of the great content that Elaine has presented to us. So Elaine is the, uh, the head of YouTube for Ireland. She looks after pretty much our strategy for YouTube in the market, and she works with some of our largest uh, agency partners and some of our largest cl uh, clients as well. So without further ado, please uh, join me in welcoming Elaine up on stage. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as Carl mentioned, I can talk about YouTube for days. Um, but luckily, I'm going to take it easy on you. And I've thought about actually what can we talk about this morning that might be useful for you to take away. So what I've done is I've put together some, um, I suppose really some of the kind of hot topics on the basis of conversations I've had quite recently with um, clients. Uh, a lot of what I talk about will be backed up with some stats and, and science. Uh, for sure, a lot of it is born and bred from experience on campaigns here in Ireland, but also um, globally. So I work closely with our product team in the States as well um, on trialing betas and that kind of thing. And for that, one of those reasons, um, I think that's one of those reasons why Ireland uh, is really flying the flag high when it comes to betas and innovations on YouTube. In Ireland, I have to tell you, it is so satisfying when my US equivalent gets up in the States and is talking about Irish brands doing great things on YouTube. Um, so to that, I suppose my background is a little bit, um, is all marketing before I came to YouTube. I used to work on building brands for sales specifically. So I'm very conscious always when I'm talking about um, brand to really tie it back to business metrics. One of the things I suppose that's very top of mind for everybody now and into the future is that by 2022, which isn't that far away, 89% of internet traffic will be video. 
So what is important is that we really kind of, you know, flex our muscle and understand what it is and means to be really successful on video. And I think that there is a lot of things here that you will be reassured by. Um, I think that your everything you know about marketing, everything you know about developing brands still absolutely um, main tr stay true. This is a little bit about flexing a little bit uh, to the nature of video and the nature of the person watching your video. So the first thing that I generally do with clients, um, and these are some of the things, the hot topics uh, are before you start, so things to think about before you start. Uh, your customers, the most more important people, winning their intention uh, with your video. Attention is like literally gold dust. Um, we are now in an attention economy for the want of a better word. Reach is a commodity. You can get reach probably on any platform where we think we play a huge role, role is in getting um, qualified, attentive reach. Um, encouraging action and then measuring results. So when I get into the room with a client, generally speaking, I will ask them what success looks like for them. So for example, I will say things like, let's say your campaign is over and you are opening the newspaper and you see a big article all about your incredible successful campaign and how it's driven your business objectives. What would that article say? What really does success look like? And it, sometimes it can be, um, you know, as, as sort of, well, if I sell more. Other times it can be if I actually move metrics. So actually if I, if I impact brand metrics in a certain way through video. Um, it can be the way that I made somebody feel. It can be that I reach 20% of people in Ireland or all 800,000 of, of rugby enthusiasts, for example. Any of those things, right? And once I, we have some understanding of that, really the rest of it gets so much easier. Everything from who you're talking to, who you need to talk to to make that happen, um, the kind of things that you provide in your marketing campaign to bring that to life, all of those things become a lot easier. So I encourage you to take the time to think about that um, before you ever get started with a video campaign. And to maybe colour our thinking in a little bit, um, we've put together a little love story, ah, collage, um, on the way that some advertisers have been thinking about results on YouTube. Here's a video. This is a love story about Fiona and the car of her dreams. It's exactly what I wanted. Thanks to the little ad that found her. This is a love story about Lou, who was looking for an adventure. Thanks to the little ad that found him. This is a love story about a hungry mom. Yum. A thirsty fan. Sponsored by Britta and 160,000 of his closest friends. This is a love story about a big brain powering a very big heart and even bigger sales results. This is a love story about your business, the customers that are looking for you, and the ad that brings you together. Good Lord, it gets me every time. Um, okay, so I do really believe when it comes to starting out that sometimes the end is the best place to start. So when we're thinking about what we want our video campaigns to do and how we want to engage with our customers, there are certain questions that we might think about asking ourselves as we move through uh, developing the campaign. So everything from developing your creative, your video, to how you actually um, promote and amplify the content, everything should always tie back to what is it that I want in the end. So there might be questions that you ask yourself about the creative, for example, around building awareness. Will people be able to recall and recognize my brand better after they see my video? Maybe I want to influence consideration. Will people be you know, more likely to consider my brand after they've seen my video? What about driving sales? Will people be more likely to buy uh, do I want to drive purchase intent or do I want to grow, grow loyalty? Will people feel closer and more engaged to me after seeing my video? And this is actually an exercise we work through with brands, but we do it with um, creators as well. Because at the end of the day, creators are doing what advertisers are trying to do, which is do uh, you know, great content that reaches and moves people. So 
video moves people, I believe, um, and can actually really change how somebody feels about a brand or even just give somebody the best first impression in the first place. So if you've never done video before, something that can be kind of, it might sound over simplistic, but search is effectively an unbelievable tool for like capturing intent. Somebody's already there, they're already searching for your product. Search is you putting your hand up saying, I'm selling this and I've got the best offer for you. Video is about um, actually connecting the message in a different way, showing the offering uh, in a very visual way and reaching them maybe in a place much higher in the funnel where they haven't yet considered you, but potentially could be on that journey if you have a great creative. So let's talk about the people, your customers. The key tip, I think, to winning on YouTube lies in understanding and respecting your audience. Um, I can tell you a couple of things about your audience generally, the Irish audience um, on YouTube, just to give you a sense of the context of the user in this case. One of them is that Irish people spend 49 minutes a day on mobile on YouTube alone. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Um, so that's one of the things. Another thing, 18 to 24 year olds spend more time on YouTube than Netflix, Facebook video, TV player video combined. Um, and TV is our fastest growing screen. So at the moment in some of our campaigns, we're seeing higher than 10% of views coming through a TV screen. So that has implications um, for where our mind goes and keeping ourselves honest when we're designing for device, which we'll get into a little bit later. But again, that's just one of the contexts of, of the audience. The other thing is that when people come to YouTube, and I really encourage you to spend some, if you don't, if you're not that familiar with YouTube, spend some time on it. The first thing is the more you spend on it, the lazier you can be, because it suggests really great stuff that you can watch. That's probably one of my favorite things. The second thing is um, you get to see actually that when people go to YouTube, right, it's totally different than when they go to any other platform. They're leaned in to watch video. They're not scrolling. They're hop from video to video and that's that's the way they browse through videos. So even that in the last couple of years has changed, but I think that trend of hopping from video to video is here to stay. So yes, you can focus on having an amazing YouTube channel and all the rest of it, but people are discovering videos on the video level. Um, it's probably really important to have an amazing YouTube channel if you're a, a big brand and people are coming to look for, uh, to, come, to come look for you. But if you're just starting out, get your video right and you're absolutely ready to go. Um, so your audience, what makes YouTube different from an audience point of view, right? And this is, I, I'm, this is my lead into talking about how you can think about your audience and the freedom you can have in doing so. So YouTube is powered by seven of our properties. So all of the targeting in YouTube, all of the way that it works organically just for people viewing um, is based on user behavior, observed user behavior from across seven of these properties, right? So everything from Android to Chrome to Maps, Photos, the Play Store, all of that good stuff actually informs how we are able to target people afterwards. So we're able to build really robust, um, far-reaching plug and play type targeting for you so that when you want to reach your audience, we know exactly how to, to reach them. And we can go as broad and as specific as you like on that. The reason why I think this is specifically different than any other platform is because it's all based on observed data. So it's actually what people are doing, not what they say they do. So all of those kind of photos where you're like, woo, I'm having a great time. I'm not really, right? These are the stuff that, this is the, the real source of truth for us um, in terms of really being able to see people and your audience as they are. And so that helps us work with our clients to show them actually who their audience is, but also provides great ways uh, for advertisers who don't work deeply with a Google account team to really get started. So as an example of that, um, every single, you know your customer, better than anybody, right? You know your audience probably better than anybody. Maybe you're in your own audience, right? Maybe you're one of your own potential customers. So you know all of that. Great place to start. And I often ask my clients for actually, tell me what you know about your client, show me the profile, and we'll be able to match that on our side as well. So this morning, if you were to think about me, generally, or my day-to-day, -day, 
Um, there's kind of some parts of the way it should have worked out and the way it didn't work out. The first one is that I was meant to get my hair blow dried. Yeah. Uh, but I slept it out and then my hair dryer exploded. So now my fringe is sticking up in front of 200 people. So that didn't work. That's great. Um, renting, went to a coffee shop. Uh, I'll be going out tonight for dinner. I go out a couple of times. Did, however, find the time, sorry, Carl, to check in on our Love Island peeps um, on the Daily Mail. And tonight I'll be going to a gig as well. Right, that's a fairly normal kind of day in the life. Um, but the nice thing is that Google actually can translate all of that to help you reach me exactly. So instead of, um, for this, for example, we have a profile called regularly visit salons. Uh, for renting, we can now target people based on whether they're renting or not. For Love Island, uh, we have like celebrity uh, gossip. You can also build a custom affinity. So we have targeted a Love Island um, type profile. I'll show you how we do that in a while. Um, we can target people who look at the Daily Mail, all of that kind of stuff. Um, regularly dines out, we can target by regularly dines out for breakfast, lunch or dinner, regularly visits coffee shops um, and regularly attends live events. So you get the idea, right? Once you actually have a real sense of what your customer does, what they care about and what they're interested in, it is absolutely really easy to start delivering content to them. And the nice thing is, when you build your campaign in YouTube and you put all of these profiles together, the system begins to learn who your customer is. So it says, okay, this is somebody who does all of these things. They're renting, they like this, they like that. They're qualifying for all of this. And what it will do is through machine learning is optimize your campaign and try and find more people like that to drive reach for your campaign. So I think that the two pieces around how it actually, the system itself learns through um, engagement with your video, who actually your audience is, and also all of the kind of plug and play profiles that we have are really good entry points to get started. Um, and we've lots of different advanced audiences now. So we've things like life events. So if you're moving out, uh, if you're getting married, if you're thinking about buying a house, if you're pregnant, um, uh, consumer patterns, things like how do you um, buying what way you kind of buy, whether you buy in a, you prefer to shop in a, a, a retailer, um, like we'll say Tesco, or do you like to go to really big box places, or do you prefer to shop in your local store, all of those things. Um, and we have a lot of stronger and affinity and in-market segments. So when we say affinity, what we really mean is what are people passionate about? What do they have an affinity with? And we've designed our targeting to be essentially built around those different ideas. Another thing that we've recently started to test um, is light TV viewers. So um, for people, for example, who you're trying to reach, who just aren't necessarily a TV audience, we can now target those guys using um, a beta that we're currently testing called light TV viewers. Um, it's based on a couple of different signals, the same way we base all of our targeting. Uh, so in this case, it's like using search signals, search for best Netflix shows on google.com, watch full length movies on YouTube, install the video streaming app, and then we verify it all with um, surveys and all of that. And essentially, we're able to target people who tend to use um, streaming apps and all of that. So like Netflix are a client of ours. Um, so it's, it's certainly not about um, any competitive element. It's really about being able to reach um, people who just you can't reach on TV. Um, so it is just another one of those. So if you're thinking about your customer and you're thinking, actually, they're not really on TV, this could be something for me. Um, that's a good one. This is a terrible slide. I apologize, especially at this hour of the morning. It's just not good enough. However, it's an important one. Um, custom affinity is your ability to actually build your own bespoke profile to you. And I am obsessed with it because it allows you to actually build your own profile and win in your own brand lane or your own product lane or your own service lane for your business. So what you can do is you can actually build your own audience on the basis of what people are interested in, places they like to frequent, and even down to apps that they have on their phone. So if this was me, 
it would be things like all the things we saw before. You can even put in um, like theater, cinemas, all of that. Let's say there's certain movies that I'm probably interested in at the moment. You can put in all of those links. Uh, for apps, you can put in everything from Fitbit to um, obviously YouTube. I also have Netflix and embarrassingly, I have Hey You. Oh God, on my phone. Um, and all of those things, maps, you name it, and you can actually build a profile that takes all of the signals from people who qualify for all of this and learns how to expand on that audience over time, and it works incredibly well. And the first time it was ever used was here in Ireland by, um, uh, by Three Mobile, um, who bravely took the leap into doing this and have done an amazing job um, on using it. So we know that it works. Um, you just have to try it, test it uh, for yourself. But again, I don't think you can get closer to exactly your audience and all the, the nuances of them there. For example, you can put in anything from like if they read newspapers, uh, if they read the Irish Times, if they read Stellar, if they read whatever, you can literally plug all of those signals in and off you go. So just think about your audience from there. Sometimes, um, we have a situation whereby customers aren't sure who their audience is at all. Like, mm, you know, uh, have a sense of it, have a sound-ish business case, really want to understand, though, who exactly is this for? So if you want to validate a few hunches, one of the things that we do often is we can build out a, a campaign and literally target everybody, every single affinity, every single age group, um, every single uh, in market, so if somebody's in market for um, cars, new tennis racket, whatever, we put the whole kit and caboodle in. And by the end of the campaign, what we end up with is a picture of actually which, which affinity audiences engage with the video. So who actually chose to watch your video in the end? And I think that's one of my favorite things about YouTube. It's also the scariest thing about marketing on YouTube is that users choose, right? So they are there, they're leaned in, ready to watch video. They're an unbelievably receptive audience. We have 50% higher watch time than any other platform. But if they're not interested in what you have to say, they will skip, right? So sometimes going really, really broad is a lovely way to see actually who is engaging. Who is choosing my brand, my product, my service? And it can be a really insightful way to get a closer um, to your audience. Winning their attention. This is some key learnings from um, creative. So how have we really made our creative work uh, hard for us? And there's a couple of pieces in this. My first one is that you need to be like Beyonce. Who doesn't? Um, yeah, so Beyonce is actually famous for it, and you, there's so many documentaries about this on YouTube, um, about Beyonce looking at loads of videos, learning about uh, seeing dance moves that she likes and then incorporating them in her music videos. This is just one fairly mild example, but she literally, there's whole videos from uh, like single ladies, for example, it was from a video that she had seen years and years ago, um, of these girls doing a dance routine, and so she copied it for the single ladies video. Um, and there's just so much of that. So the reason I'm saying be like Beyonce is have a look on YouTube trends for actually what, what are the videos that are, are trending right now. It won't necessarily tell you about your specific audience in that case, but it will tell you what's working, what's cutting through. Um, in that ocean of videos, which ones are actually rising to the top and why. So that can be a really nice thing to look at. You can also use Google Trends to look at what are the hot topics for your category. Uh, you can look at it by YouTube and by Google. YouTube is also the world's second largest search engine. So it's a really good indication of what um, is trending and on people's minds at the moment. So for example, I came into work a couple of weeks ago and I was like, who is Kiki? Uh, because this Drake video about uh, doing this Kiki dance and Kiki Do You Love Me was starting to uh, spike and I had no clue what was going on. Uh, but I went in to see it and I know that some brands took advantage of that and started to make their own kind of parody videos as well. Look at other players in the market. Who's doing it really well? As in other brands who you think are selling something sort of similar to yours, but you obviously have a better product. Um, 
who's doing it really well? Who's doing it badly? Can you make a play on that? Or what would you do differently about that? And I think those things are particularly important. It is critical that you learn about what your customers care about so that you can create videos that they'll want to watch. Designing for YouTube. This always reminds me of my nephew when I'm like trying to talk to him and he's ignoring me. Um, yeah, so designing for YouTube. A couple of things, and these are all quite quick and scrappy, right? But we're all here together and we're going to get through it. Um, design for mobile. Design your creative for mobile. Design your creative for mobile with a battery on battery saver. So that's a dim setting uh, for someone who's standing in the sun. That sounds hilarious, but it's actually true, right? So if you are designing, I, I mentioned earlier that TV screens are becoming like the biggest screen. If something looks good on mobile, it will look incredible on TV. So make sure that it's bright um, and all of that kind of stuff. It sounds so basic, but it is so important. When we look at brand metrics for campaigns that are completely dark throughout the whole thing without any play on color and light, um, they're like literally 60% uh, less in performance than ones that actually can show up on a mobile in different conditions. So that's just one thing, design on mobile, flourish on TV. And then framing. So this is actually something that we started applying to advertising, but that we had learned through uh, creators. Framing is so important. This is a Mandalay's ad, and we can see she's after coming in the door there after a night out. Um, and she's trying to be really quiet is the context of this. Um, and so on TV, this would be totally fine. Um, but actually, maybe it might be better like this, or this, or maybe that, right? So the funny thing is, when we experimented with these, this turned out to be the highest performing across um, mobile and TV, right? So. Creators are actually really good as well at like speaking directly to camera, getting right in there um, and letting, letting uh, you know, speaking and connecting with their audience. And when you think about it, when people are on YouTube, they're usually looking for one of three things, right? They're looking for information, they're looking for um, connection, or they're looking for entertainment. So think about your brand and the territory that you want to play in there. Do you want to be, can you fit into? any of those three things. Even if you're just thinking of doing your own videos, have a little think about that. What if you just didn't know which one of those was better or not, right? Um, that's fine. We experiment all of the time on this kind of thing with advertisers. What we do in that case is we take three different edits of the video and we run them against the same audience. So let's say in this case you were trying to target mums of um, toddlers, for example. We can do that now. Um, what you would do is run this creative against the same audience. And just for a quick and dirty test, you can see which ones watched the video for longer, which ones had the highest engagement, and see actually which one is driving the most engagement amongst your audience. A more sophisticated way of doing it would be to use brand lift surveys, which I will be touching on in the measurement section. So I'll park that for now. But the nice thing about this quick and scrappy approach is that it's actually one of the approaches that a big movie house uses to decide which characters to keep or kill on a series. So next time you're thinking about skipping, think about your favorite character and whether they should live or not. So yeah, actually, you know, movies are using that to see which character is resonating better with audiences um, for TV series and all of that kind of thing. So the actual use cases here are absolutely endless. Um, the story arc has completely changed, and this is as true for advertising as it is for creators, bloggers, any sort of communication on video now. Um, this is something we worked on in conjunction with BBDO, so it's not specifically just YouTube, um, it's kind of verified by those guys. Traditionally, what we would have seen with um, videos or just ads in general would be this kind of lead in, this build and the big reveal and then there'd be a little bit of off, you know, an offer and branding and, and that's it and that's wonderful. And that might work for something like TV where you don't have a choice but it doesn't work on video where you people actually have to actively choose to engage with your brand. Um, and so we have this emerging story arc where we ask people to, when they're delivering a story, start high, you know, get into it, show them what you're about. 
Uh, sometimes a little unexpected shift can work then after that. Um, multiple peaks in the story and then more story for those who want it. So somebody who I think does this really, really well um, is AIB. So last year I worked with AIB on The Toughest with uh, Jeff and Cami, and this year they've released The Rivals. And I just want to have a quick look at their trailer to see what I mean by this whole starting high piece. of revenge and you've dumped it on my shoulders to try to get them to get the result. It's all I need. There's so much pressure. There's so much attention. Come on, D. D. Isles. Being Italian, he'll know even less about this than I do. <laughs> and I want Johnny to pass me the ball in there. Your right foot's up there over the ball. Bang. Let's win this ball from the kick out. Maybe switch to the other side. Oh, Don't give the ball away like that. <laughs> so who knows? Me and Luca could have a rack on the touchline. <laughs> that was fun editing the, the language out of some of those videos. Um, yeah, uh, so I really like that they get nice and uh, high for the beginning and there's more for those who wanted it. It's kind of trailer style. I really like it. And I'd worked on the Showman uh, campaign before. So we had the Showman, the movie. So we had um, took all of the learnings from that and applied it there, which is really nice. Um, in terms of format, so I always get asked, should we do that? You know, should we do non-skippable? Should we do skippable? And all of those are such valid questions. And so here is some of my answers. For YouTube, use a combination for a combination of scenarios, right? So I could be exactly your right customer, but let's say I'm running for the bus. I, there's a 30 second ad. I'm skipping that ad. If it was a six second ad, I'm like, oh yeah, fine. You know, whatever. That's probably not a good example. I'm sorry. I haven't woken up yet. But Bite size ads are six seconds long. You don't skip them. They're amazing at driving reach. They're really, really snappy. And I'll give you some uh, creative sort of um, considerations for that. We would also say run a snack as well. So a 15 to 20 second piece for people who are don't want the big long chapter, but would like something in the middle. And finally give them uh, the meal, which is the, either the 30 second or long. Um, because often we do find that there is a beautiful longer creative out there and why don't we promote it? We can get uh, the, the retention on it. But how do you put all of these things together then to make sure that they work really well? So we have, um, I've worked on a lot of campaigns and one of the things that seems to really work very well is um, by using a combination of bumpers, then the, the the meatier bits and then bumpers again at the end. So let me just explain what bumpers are before I show you what the um, what the the framework looks like. With bumpers, you literally tell a six second story in six seconds. It's a whole story. So I like to think of it as like hook, line, sinker, right? So that is it. It's six seconds. They're amazing at driving ad recall. Um, in this case, I think they do nine out of 10 cases. I think it's like 9.9% .9 out of 10. Um, that's just an example there from those guys, but I should have this example, which is one of my favorites. Now, at the moment also uh, for AIB, we've lots of bumpers running as well, and they're absolutely incredible. But this is, the reason I like this bumper is because I think it shows that you can actually run these second, six second ads as a standalone if you don't want to use, if you don't want to go down the full brand orchestration campaign framework. Uh, the thing that I really love about it as well is that for me, it is sort of one of the finest examples of video in the sense of what are we really trying to do with video? We're trying to find, show people something that resonates with them, that aligns sort of with our brand values. So it's kind of this like unmet um, or there's this kind of utility in your customer's life and you need to align your brand values with that. And I think that we here successfully align our brand values with somebody's need. Never run out of storage again. Free up space with Google Photos. We've all been there, right? Um, and it's just six seconds, but it is so impactful. But trust me, hook, line, sinker, they work so well. Um, so if I was to put them all together, this is what I would be doing. I would tease with six second ads in the very beginning. You can run a number of those. Um, just out from the very start of the campaign. 
if you're a large advertiser at this point, you might want to take over a U the YouTube homepage because we do see it drives wonderful momentum on campaigns. Otherwise, amplify with a 15, 20 second and also your longer video if you have it. Um, and at the end then, echo with shorter ads. And that might sound overly simplistic, but actually it really, really works to, to tease. It's a really cost effective way to tease. You can drive um, the 15 to 20 second ads, serve as kind of these fast, little bit deeper reminders um, of your offering. You can drive deep engagement here and then fast reminders again at the end. So it works really, really well and a nice way to think about it if you're going through with it. So there's my burger appearing again there, 30 seconds or longer. So that's really, and I know that's a whistle-stop tour. Like I said, I could talk about this forever, but hopefully you're getting some good stuff out of this. Um, encouraging action. So let's say for this section, I want you to think about either this is going to sit alongside your big brand campaign, or else if you're purely a performance advertiser, maybe who is only live on search and has never been on video, this can be a really, really good entry point. One of the things with this is, uh, my team are now currently supporting, um, trialing out, supporting advertisers moving from search to video, as in, well, adding video to their search. So what we've done in a couple of cases is we've taken somebody's best performing search campaign and turned it into a video ad. It's really, really simple. We do things like that all the time with taking print and turning them into to video. If you need that kind of resource, because I understand resource can be a barrier here, do reach out to your teams at Google. Um, and we can try and scope that out for you. So with all of that said, we have another format that is driven completely towards performance. So while all of our other, the ones you know and love, the skippable brand, the six second non-skippable, all of those campaign, all of those videos and ad formats I've talked about so far, they're all about branding, engagement, optimizing for view. This is literally a beast for conversions and uh, driving qualified traffic to your site. So we find it really works very well when we set it up and drive, make the conversion like visited a relevant landing page. So actually click through to get to a quote page or to buy something or to learn more. We're seeing this work really, really well with gigs, for example, festivals um, and some of the telcos. So. As I say, it literally, this is what the ad looks like. You've got a big learn more there. You can customize it to be any of these different things. Um, and at the end of the video, which it actually doesn't show there, the whole screen becomes full for um, another five to 15 seconds, depending on uh, with a big learn more right in the middle of the screen there. And the other nice thing is that the button, a learn more button appears over here and it stays on there for the entire video session of the person that they're watching. So if they don't click through then in 20 minutes when they realize where they are and that they've gotten lost in YouTube, they might go back and click. Um, one of the most powerful things about this, and this is back to audience, is that we have finally been able to get Google search and YouTube to talk to each other better. I've been waiting for this forever. So essentially what we're able to do now is if somebody searches for something on Google search, we're able to then serve them an ad on YouTube. So this is really important for, as I'd mentioned earlier, here they are, you're kind of capturing the intent. Maybe they didn't convert. I think like what 10% of, of I don't actually know what the, I, I have a slide that shows me it's like 15% of people will kind of get to this place, but, or 100% of people will get to this place, but you know, not everyone is gonna convert. So you're able to talk um, to them again on YouTube. And it's for people who have searched in the last seven days. So there's this wonderful recency about it. Somebody has searched for something, and then within the next seven days, they get this ad saying, buy now, learn more, quote, etc. So the way you set that up is you can take either your top performing keywords or you can just put in new keywords. Um, and anyone who has searched those in the last seven days may be served a YouTube ad by you. It's very, very powerful. Of course, this for format requires a different way of thinking in terms of creative, right? So we've moved from brand into action now. So I need to talk about people a little bit differently. Uh, I need to talk to people a little bit differently. The other thing was about moving. How do I make them feel? How do I impact brand metrics? How do I get ad recall? This is about how do I get them to do something? 
So the way that we treat the creative can be a little bit different. So we gave this sort of action oriented treatment to this video um, starring Craig Doyle. This is the before. With Everest's combination of continuous hinges and multi-point locking system, these bifold doors are the most secure yet. Sorry! Their internal beating makes them even more secure from the outside. Sorry! Best of all, their thermally toughened glass is there to keep you safe and secure. Should a football, rugby ball or £200 force come knocking? Secure your doors today. Fit the best. Fit Everest. And this is how we optimized it for action. With Everest's combination of continuous hinges and multi-point locking system, these bifold doors are the most secure yet. Secure your doors today. Fit the best. Fit Everest. So they're just slightly different, right? Um, again, absolutely not rocket science, but they can make such a difference to the performance. Um, there was other thing, yeah, sorry, just one other thing on that is, actually, if you're moving into this and you want to use TrueView for action, a couple of things that are just um, very useful are, can't, you know, repeating um, what you want them to do. So a couple of times there, you hear him say the brand name a lot. You also hear him tell you what it is exactly you want him to do. And it says it very clearly as well. And just to confirm that Craig Doyle is not a relation of mine. Um, if you are using YouTube for performance, uh, it is an always on product, right? It is great at being able to capture all of the great stuff you do up here from a brand point of view. But when you think about it, people are always searching for it, something that you're selling, a product or service, and this gets better and smarter over time. So the longer you have it actually running, the smarter it gets to actually converting towards your goals and learning your audience. So it's very, very efficient. It's kind of a no brainer because pe if people aren't searching and if people aren't clicking through, you don't pay, right? So it's completely efficient. Um, if you are serious about converting attention, I just have to make this point. This is me now on my soapbox. Sorry, Carl. If you're serious about converting attention, you really need to pay attention to viewability. And I say this because if somebody has not seen your ad, i.e. if your ad is not strongly viewable, it's very unlikely that you can say that somebody took an action on the back of that ad. So irrespective of what um, conversions, platforms, etc., are reporting, if they do not have strong viewability, it is very unlikely that they are actually driving the conversions that they are saying that they are. And I hate to see dollars wasted, so that's why I'm saying that. YouTube is 95% view industry viewability. We are higher than the MRC accredited standard and that we continue to try and lead in that area because we feel like it is so important for our advertisers. Um, the second thing about viewability is that we also have done lots of research. Um, you can see it all on Think with Google uh, with various independent um, like Ipsos or Double Verify. Um, that have shown us that actually ads that are viewable and audible so that you can see and hear have a stronger and positive effect on somebody's ability to, for example, recall the ad. Again, not rocket science, but it does go to show that if you've invested in a beautiful creative with music, all those things that will actually have an impact on your customer, make sure that they are seen and heard. Measuring the impact on my business. A couple of things here. There's lots of things we can measure. Again, I love the kind of the, the scrappier, let's test it and see what the campaign data tells us. But there are other things. We can run brand lift surveys, and I'll show you an example of that. Um, there's online results, of course. If you use Google Analytics, you'll be able to see quite clearly what your uh, brand campaigns are doing for you. Offline results, we have third party solutions. Um, we have YouTube store visits now, so we can actually show after somebody has seen your brand ad on YouTube, did they go to your shop, all of that kind of stuff. I really want to show you this. Uh, which of the, these are our brand lift surveys, right? So this is the way it works. This is for um, ad recall and this is for brand awareness. We can also measure purchase intent, consideration. We can also measure an uplift in Google search directly as a result of your YouTube campaign. So did people search for you after they saw your video ad as a direct result of that ad? 
Um, what we do is we run your YouTube campaign and then we serve this survey in the space of where you would normally say a YouTube video ad to people who saw your ad and an exact replica of that audience but people who didn't see your ad and measure the difference between the two. So people who saw your ad, people who didn't, what's the difference? Um, and we can attribute a certain amount of uplift. Again, we do that uh, for lots of campaigns, but it's also one that we lean on to make those kind of big decisions around sometimes if we're launching a huge campaign before the World Cup, for example, like we were working on with Nike and Adidas, they want to know which campaign works, the, which creative actually works the best. So we'll put three creatives into a campaign with a smaller budget, see which one works the best, um, and then we'll go live with that tease, amplify, and echo with the one that has actually performed the best. Um, so just things to consider when you are looking at that. This is my gift to you. Our playbook for creative <laughs> uh, advertising. Um, the reason I love this site is because there are some things you will just skim through, you'll be like, okay, fine. But the really nice thing is there's loads and loads of video examples, there's worksheets. So all of the worksheets even that I have done with my clients, I've actually uploaded to the site so you can do it. There are decks, so if you're ever for any reason talking about YouTube to somebody yourself, you too can spread the good word by downloading any of the decks from this site. So if you just search Playbook for Creative Advertising, all of the stuff is there uh, for you and I would love you to have a look at it. If you have any feedback, let me know. Um, there are uh, slides, like I said, there's worksheets, all of that good stuff. Finally, I want to leave you with something that I am particularly proud of. Um, I would mentioned earlier that 3Mobile had um, been really brave enough to test our custom affinity audiences with us. And in doing so, we were able to reach exactly their audience. Um, we ran this 30 second ad, which I'm about to show you in a second. You notice it's a little bit darker, right? But the treatment of it and the way that the, 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 way that the light is treated throughout the video works really, really well. Um, and we were able to send it to exactly their audience. The engagement rates turned out to be the highest in the world, right? So we are the small country that can. Uh, the highest in the world for Shree Mobile um, last month and the month before. Um, it's an incredible video and I think it is, again, I think when you'll see it, you'll be like, yeah, this is music, I can hear it, I can see it, um, and I hope that it inspires you to think about your next step on YouTube. We can't fight this feeling well, so many years have meaning We touch souls, now we're even It's small and sweet and it beat Beyonce and Jay-Z when they were trying to beat, promote their album. So if I ever meet them, I'll apologize. Thank you so much for listening this morning. Thanks so much, Elaine. I think I can speak on behalf of the room when I say um, we can feel your passion for YouTube. Yeah. Right there. You're it's so embarrassing. It's exuding from you. So uh, thank you so much. So guys, we're going to take some questions in a moment. So I'll give you just a minute to think of um, your questions for Elaine. In the meantime, um, I do want to say that, as always, um, the content will be up on YouTube um, afterwards. So if you go to the Google and YouTube Ireland channel, you will find the content, the presentation Elaine has just gone through. Um, and then to Elaine's point as well around the, the creator playbook. Um, so I'm working with um, some of the largest agencies in the country and the same I had previously done so in the UK as well. That creator playbook is the starting point pretty much mm -hmm. for 99% of the conversations that we've had. So if you're looking for that playbook, go to Google search, type in YouTube creator playbook. It'll take you to the link. And as Elaine said, really, really great resources and good starting point for any YouTube campaign. Mm. So with that being said, anyone in the question with burning questions on, you know, you're thinking about doing YouTube or you've done it before, didn't work. Any questions, now's your chance to fire them at Elaine. So put your hand up if you do have a question. Down here, right in front of me.
Hi. Much? Hi. Hi. Who's the glittery uh, bag? Who is the glittery bag? I saw a glittery bag come on past me. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, we tracked down from Belfast this morning. <laughs> so hopefully, as well as Limerick, Carl, you'll come to Belfast <laughs> over the border. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> um, thank you for that presentation. It was great. Um, my question is around vertical video. Yeah. So um, I run a website, trainermatchmaker.com, to tell people about learning events like this Brilliant. and trainers that are available to hire. So I got to go to BBC's Digi Belfast free learning event, which was amazing. And those creatives, those um, video creators were very, very against um, vertical video. They say that we've got two eyes. Our eyes are um, wide across our face. So why dare anybody make us watch vertical video? But I've seen that this week, YouTube is now hosting vertical video. I know that Instagram now has Instagram Live mm. TV, which I assume is a competitor to YouTube. So what's the research at the minute or what's the YouTube feeling on vertical video now that it's currently being hosted? A big shock to me. <laughs> Um, okay, that's actually a really good question. Um, so vertical video, when you upload a vertical video to YouTube today, if you were to do that, um, what you would see on desktop is two kind of black spaces on the side of the video. But on mobile, it looks perfect. It fills the entire screen. The reason that we've allowed that uh, full transparency is that we have lots of advertisers who for uh, creative constraint reasons, really, really want to be on YouTube, but they also have, uh, they're on YouTube, but they also want to use the creative across other platforms, right? And so what we've done is we've said, okay, we will accommodate you uploading those videos on our platform and it will look great on, on mobile, it won't look as good on desktop, but over 80% of our views come through a mobile device, right? So we're kind of like, okay, it does. We're accommodating it really, um, in a way. The other thing is that we have a player that can adjust for that kind of thing. So, like Instagram, Facebook, they're all mobile first. We are, as in, they're just on mobile app. Generally speaking, they get some desktop traffic. We are on TV, mobile, um, and. Uh, I have actually forgotten all devices in the world here. Mobile TV, yeah, they're the main ones. Mobile TV and desktop, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so essentially that was just to accommodate people who wanted to flex because Facebook can't flex in that way and Instagram TV can't. So we're doing it um, just to allow people to be able to move kind of seamlessly between platforms. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. Was there something else? Oh yeah, Instagram TV is not a competitor, come on. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I only joking, but thank you for the question. Brilliant, thanks for the question. Um, raise your hand, guys, if you have a question. I'll um, be here. Oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> oh yeah, like throw, it. throw it. I love this bit. <laughs> Hi, that was fantastic. Thanks, Elaine. Oh, thank um, you. Just a question. Coming up to Christmas. Yeah. Um, interactive and augmented reality videos. Yeah. Would you suggest doing them? <laughs> um, so here's augmented reality, and here's the thing. I do think that augmented reality is obviously incredible, and we are definitely thinking about. We have YouTube channel. We have a whole YouTube apps dedicated to augmented reality video, uh, that were born out of our gaming business, for example, and that kind of thing. So we're very invested in that. In terms of the would you do it? Absolutely. Love it, no reason not to, but I would say that you can be innovative in ways that don't require massive investment and resources. I think you can be innovative in doing things um, like your approach to engaging with your audience, um, how you speak to them, how you play with the formats, that kind of thing. I love augmented reality. If I had a um, bottomless budget and all of that, I would do it. Um, we also do marketing for YouTube, right? So we know what platforms kind of what they do and what they don't do. I love, for example, on Snapchat that I love that <laughs> augmented reality bit that can come into it. So you can put your face filters and you can do all of that. I don't like that accounts of you the second somebody opens the app. So it's kind of like I love augmented reality. I love the engagement. Um, do it if you think that it makes absolute sense for your audience and if you think that your audience will see it. 
do it if you think that you can tell your audience that you've done it. Sometimes I see people build amazing um, augmented reality platforms, but never tell anybody that they've done it through something like a YouTube campaign. And so it just sits there gather, gathering dust. So I would say there are some considerations. We're big fans. So, so the interactive would probably be better one, something like the James Bond ads that you see. Yeah, I love those. You know, the, yeah, that kind yeah, of Yeah, I think interactive, anything that you can Anything that you can tell people about and that will create a, a story. Anything that you can say, this is what we're doing, join in with this. So like for example, AIB did a beautiful thing with their game. If you go to the toughest journey, is it the, yeah, the toughest journey.com, they've built this game for GA and it's literally like it would have cost you 50 euros back in uh, the 90s. Um, and it's just this lovely free game that you can play, everyone is playing it. It's seriously cool. It's not augmented reality, but it's playful. And I think if, if going back again to what's our objective, is our objective to be playful? Because I think that being, just being innovative and using augmented reality to be innovative and sexy and techy isn't a good enough reason to do it. Thanks for the questions, folks. Um, I'm afraid that I'm gonna hang around. The, the bright lights uh, tell me that we've either run out of time or else oh, yeah. um, the spaceships are calling us home. So uh, <laughs> with, with, with that, um, we'll call it a day. Thank you so much for your attendance. Thank you for the questions. And if you do have any burning questions. Thank uh, you. Thank you.